Shalom and welcome. My name is Adam with Parable of the Vineyard YouTube Ministries. Today we're going to be talking about a highly controversial topic, Mystery Babylon. There's so many opinions out there of who or what is Babylon. I think the majority would say America or Rome could be Babylon. And to that, I'd say you're not wrong. At this point, the whole world is Babylon. Many daughters. But there's one mother of all these harlots across the world. And today, we're going to be talking about her. This is a subject that we have put a lot of time and research into. Now, that alone does not mean we have the right answer. However, I do feel led to put forth the understanding that we have at this time. This video is going to consist of two videos that we've put out in the past. If you've watched them before, it might be a good time to review the evidence at hand. It's going to consist of these two videos here, Ezekiel 36, End Times, Israel Prophecy, and Mystery Babylon, Mother of Harlots and Abominations. If you're intrigued and you'd like to do further research, I would highly recommend these uh, three other videos. If nothing else, this one right here. I think this video, it's a little bit longer, ties in the rest of the information that we need to know. The reason that I'm doing this video again is because there's an important call for Yah's people to come out of her, lest we partake in her plagues and her destruction. So if we're to properly come out of her, we need to properly identify her. One last thing. This topic can be very triggering for some people. And I don't bring this up to bring strife or contention. We have to understand that the word divides. Messiah didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. The truth divides. I don't know about you. I'd rather be divided in truth than united in error. With that being said, the information we're going to bring up today is not about a specific group of people, ethnicity, or race. This is all about doctrine. Much like when Messiah rebuked the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the religious leaders of the time, it was all about the bad doctrine. That's what this video is about. Blessings to you. Shalom. Many who are awake will agree that these are the very last days, where the return of our Messiah is even at the doors. However, many still have no idea what to expect. Today, we will dissect a message God has for you through the prophet Ezekiel. Long ago, the prophet Ezekiel was instructed to speak directly to the land of Israel and prophesy concerning what was to come in the last days. Little did we know that Ezekiel saw this very time right now and has detailed words of instruction concerning what we are waiting to see unfold very soon so that we're not caught unawares as those that continue to sleep despite all the reason to awaken to the truth and to cast off the works of darkness and obey the way, the truth, in the life. We begin our journey in Ezekiel 36. And you, son of man, Prophesy to the mountains of Israel and say, O mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, Because the enemy said of you, Aha! And the ancient heights have become our possession. Therefore, prophesy and say, Thus says the Lord God, Precisely because they made you desolate and crushed you from all sides, so that you became the possession of the rest of the nations, and you became the talk and evil gossip of the people. As we just read above, it is clear that the land of Israel will be in the hands of the enemy until our Heavenly Father acts. We have been taught that the 1948 creation of the State of Israel is the fulfillment of the regathering that is spoken of by the Most High, Yahuwah. This is an end times event marker and what we as believers in Yahusha, Jesus Christ, is waiting for. Here are a few examples of that prophecy. Jeremiah 32, 37 through 40. Behold, I will gather them out of all the countries, whether I have driven them in mine anger and in my fury and in great wrath. And I will bring them again unto this place, and I will cause them to dwell safely.
and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. And I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for the good of them and of their children after them. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. Jeremiah 16, 14 through 15. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, The Lord liveth, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth, that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north, and from all the lands whither he had driven them, and I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. Isaiah 66, 7 through 8. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. Who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Many scholars will say that this 1948 political state of Israel is the fulfillment of these and many other connecting verses. However, the ten lost tribes of Israel have not been regathered yet, as this is a requirement of this fulfillment, as described in Ezekiel 37, as well as it is said that they will dwell safely in the land of Israel forever. Ezekiel 37 The hand of the Lord was upon me, and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. And caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves, and cause you to come up out of your graves, and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. Most of us have no idea, but this is the same event Paul was describing in 1 Thessalonians 4. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus, Yeshua, will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with a trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick, and write upon it, for Judah, and for the children of Israel his companions. Then take another stick, and write upon it, for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel his companions. And join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Wilt thou not show us what thou meanest by these? Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in mine hand. And the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thine hand before their eyes. And say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side, and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all. And they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt. And they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. 
it shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will place them and multiply them, and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them, yea, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And the heathen shall know that I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. Brothers and sisters, it's very evident that these things have not happened yet. So, what is the state of Israel doing there, and what's its purpose? Therefore, O mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus says the Lord God to the mountains and the hills and the ravines and the valleys, the desolate wastes and the deserted cities, which have become a prey and derision to the rest of the nations all around. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, surely I have spoken in my hot jealousy against the rest of the nations and against all Edom, who gave my land to themselves as a possession with wholehearted joy and utter contempt that they might make its pasture lands a prey. Many of us know by now that there is a group of families that literally own everything materialized, and it is their plan to turn the populations into fearful, helpless slaves. The Illuminati, the fake Jews, Satanists, the so-called elites, or whatever you want to call them, have taken over nearly every government. This plan has been in motion for a long time. Some would even say thousands of years. In 1920, the League of Nations was formed as a precursor to the United Nations, whose beginning was officially October 24, 1945. The official reasoning for establishing these groups are stated as, The League of Nations was an international organization founded after the Paris Peace Conference, 1919. The League's goals included disarmament, preventing war through collective security, settling disputes between countries through negotiation, diplomacy, and improving global welfare. By the scriptures, we know that when the world comes together as one, this is not a good thing. All one must do is research the last time this happened, the Tower of Babel. Its goal was to attempt to rule the world and overthrow God. Thousands of years later, has anything changed? Not a chance. I could go on in detail about how the UN created this political state of Israel and the lies and deceit that went into creating the emotional response from the world in order to back this. But that would honestly take a whole other video to explain. What is interesting is who this was done for. The Rothschild family who many believe are. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Here's a copy of the official letter. Remember what we just read. Who gave my land to themselves as a possession with wholehearted joy and utter contempt that they might make its pasture lands a prey. Casting God's sacred land for a prey to fulfill their desires is their whole plan. In 1871, Albert Pike, a 33rd degree and leader of the Freemasons wrote a letter mapping out the three world wars to create agendas and chaos in order to pave the road to gain worldwide control in a one world government. The first world war must be brought about in order to permit the Illuminati to overthrow the power of the czars in Russia and of making that country a fortress of atheistic communism. The divergences caused by the agent tour the agents of the Illuminati between the British and Germanic empires will be used to foment this war. At the end of the war, communism will be built and used in order to destroy the other governments and in order to weaken the religions. The Second World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences between the fascists and the political Zionists. 
This war must be brought about so that Nazism is destroyed and that the political Zionism be strong enough to institute a sovereign state of Israel in Palestine. During the Second World War, international communism must be strong enough in order to balance Christendom, which would be then restrained and held in check until the time when we would need it for the final social cataclysm. So far, the first and second have gone according to plan. And keep in mind, brothers and sisters, Revelation 17, 17, for God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. So not to worry, brothers and sisters, this is all part of Yahuwah's grand plan. The Third World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the agent tour of the Illuminati between the political Zionists and the leaders of the Islamic world. The war must be conducted in such a way that Islam and political Zionism mutually destroy each other. Meanwhile, the other nations, once more divided on this issue, will be constrained to fight to the point of complete physical, moral, and spiritual and economical exhaustion. We shall unleash the nihilists and the atheists, and we shall provoke a formidable social cataclysm which in all its horror will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism, origin of savagery, and the most bloody turmoil. Then, everywhere, the citizens obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization and the multitude, disillusioned with Christianity, whose deistic spirits from that moment be without compass or direction, anxious for an ideal, but without knowing where to render its adoration, will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer, brought finally out in the public view. This manifestation will result from the general reactionary movement, which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both conquered and exterminated at the same time. Who gave my land to themselves as a possession with wholehearted joy and utter contempt that they might make its pasture lands a prey. In short, Israel is the bait and the prey just as Ezekiel prophesied it would happen. Essentially, they made the 1948 State of Israel just to use it to start World War III with its coming destruction. So I ask, what would a believer think if not too long from now, the State of Israel was destroyed and laid waste? Since most teach this is the fulfillment of God, what would happen to the faith of many? Questions would arise. Doubts in the legitimacy of scriptures will become rampant, just as the enemy wants it to be. Their plan is to convert the multitude disillusioned with Christianity. Should we really be all that surprised that we are going to witness this event? After all, our Messiah told us what happened in the end times. And when ye shall see Jerusalem encompassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Many are unaware, but this destruction of Jerusalem and the land of Israel is the righteous judgment of the Most High, Yahuwah. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her, that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Receive double. Haven't we heard this before in Revelation? And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird 
For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven, saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her, even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double, according to her works, in the cup which she hath filled to her double. Yes, brothers and sisters, Jerusalem is Mystery Babylon. Before you get upset and click off this video because you know the USA or Rome or the Vatican is Babylon, keep in mind, this harlot has many daughters. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. The opposite is true. Thus says the Lord God, I brought this people out of bondage and gave them commandments through my servants, the prophets, but they would not listen to them and made my counsels void. The mother who bore them says to them, go my children, because I am a widow and forsaken. I brought you up with gladness, but with mourning and sorrow, I have lost you because you have sinned before the Lord God and have done what is evil in my sight. But now what can I do for you? For I am a widow and forsaken. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And in her was found the blood of the prophets, and of saints, and of all that were slain upon the earth. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often I would gather thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and you would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with a sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. How is the faithful city become an harlot? It was full of judgment, righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. Mystery Babylon, the great city. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. It is evident that our Messiah was crucified in Jerusalem. So yes, we will see the destruction of Israel, Jerusalem, before we see the day we are waiting for. The body of Christ is completely oblivious to all of this. Almost all of us have been taught that the Jews living in Israel are God's people and he will rapture the church and then go on to deal with those Jews. This is farthest from the truth. Keep in mind that it was prophesied long ago by Moses that whoever does not believe in Jesus Christ, Yahusha HaMashiach, the promised one, the beloved, the only begotten Son of God, Yahuwah, will be cut off from his people and no longer be his people. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whoever will not hearken unto my words which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. So who is end times Israel? Well, in short, you, who believe in the promised Messiah. 
you have been grafted into the house of Israel. Wherefore, remember that ye, being in past times Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, Yahusha, ye who sometimes were afar off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Made nigh unto what? The house of Israel. Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Galatians 3. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus, Yahusha. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Remember the Ezekiel 37 prophecy about the two sticks we heard earlier? Say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in my hand. It was prophesied even way before this as to why the stick is in the hand of Ephraim. Before Jacob, Israel's death, he blessed the two children of Joseph, which would begin this chain of events. In Genesis 48, we see Jacob, Israel, blessing the two sons of Joseph before he dies. Something interesting happens. When Joseph tried to put the correct hand on the elder son, Manasseh, to receive the elder's blessing, and his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. He also shall become a people, and he also shall be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. Multitude of nations is also translated and is the same as the fullness of the Gentiles. But if some of the branches were broken off, and you, although a wild olive shoot, were grafted in among the others and now share in the nourishing root of the olive tree, do not be arrogant towards the branches. If you are, remember, it is not you who support the root, but the root that supports you. Then you will say, branches were broken off so that I might be grafted in. That is true. They were broken off because of their unbelief. But you stand fast through faith. So do not become proud, but fear. For if God did not spare the natural branches, neither will he spare you. Note then the kindness and the severity of God severity towards those who have fallen. But God's kindness to you, provided you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you too will be cut off. And even they, if they do not continue in their unbelief, will be grafted in. For God has the power to graft them in again. For you were cut from what is by nature a wild olive tree, and grafted contrary to nature, and to a cultivated olive tree. How much more will these the natural branches be grafted back into their own olive tree. Lest you be wise in your own sight, I do not want you to be unaware of this mystery, brothers. A partial hardening has come upon Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And in this way, all Israel will be saved as it is written. So what does this all mean? Again, you have been grafted into the house of Israel and the rest of Ezekiel 36 applies to you who remain in faith and obedience to Yahuwah through his son, Yahusha. Now, let's go through the rest of Ezekiel 36 and see what is to come for us after we see this destruction of the land of Israel. But you, O mountains of Israel, 
shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people, Israel. For they will soon come home. For behold, I am for you, and I will turn to you, and you shall be tilled and sown, and I will multiply people on you, the whole house of Israel, all of it. The cities shall be inhabited, and the waste places rebuilt, and I will multiply on you man and beast, and they shall multiply and be fruitful, and I will cause you to be inhabited as in your former times, and will do more good to you than ever before. Then you will know that I am the Lord. I will let people walk on you, even my people Israel, and they shall possess you, and you shall be their inheritance, and you shall no longer bereave them of children. Thus says the Lord God, because they say to you, you devour people, and you bereave your nation of children. Therefore, you shall no longer devour people, and no longer bereave your nation of children, declares the Lord God. And I will not let you hear any more the reproach of the nations, and you shall no longer bear the disgrace of the peoples, and no longer cause your nation to stumble, declares the Lord God. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their own land, they defiled it by their ways and their deeds. Their ways before me were like the uncleanness of a woman in her menstrual impurity. So I poured out my wrath upon them for the blood that they had shed in the land, for the idols which they had defiled it. I scattered them among the nations, and they were dispersed through the countries. In accordance with their ways and their deeds, I judged them. But when they came to the nations, wherever they came, they profaned my holy name. And that the people said of them, These are the people of the Lord, and yet they had to go out of his land. But I had concern for my holy name which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations to which they came. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, It is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations to which you came. And I will vindicate the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, and which you have profaned among them. And the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Lord God, when through you... I vindicate my holiness before their eyes. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness. And from all your idols I will cleanse you. And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. You shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. And I will deliver you from all your uncleanness, and I will summon the grain and make it abundant and lay no famine upon you. I will make the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field abundant, that you may never again suffer the disgrace of famine among the nations. Then you will remember your evil ways and your deeds that were not good, and you will loathe yourselves for your iniquities and your abominations. It is not for your sake that I will act, declares the Lord God. Let that be known to you. Be ashamed and confounded for your ways, O house of Israel. Thus says the Lord God, On the day that I cleanse you from all your iniquities, I will cause the cities to be inhabited, and the waste places shall be rebuilt, and the land that was desolate shall be tilled, instead of being the desolation that it was in the sight of all who passed by. And they will say, This land that was desolate has become like the Garden of Eden, and the waste and desolate and ruined cities are now fortified and inhabited. Then the nations that are left all around you shall know that I am the Lord. I have rebuilt the ruined places and replanted that which was desolate. I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it. Thus says the Lord God, This also I will let the house of Israel ask me to do for them, to increase their people like a flock, like the flock for sacrifices, like the flock at Jerusalem during her appointed feasts. So shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of people. Then they will know that I am the Lord, Yahuwah. Beautiful words, and a day we should all be hoping for. Remember, this mortal life is but a vapor, and our real citizenship is within the walls of New Jerusalem. Yahuwah, our Father, 
told us how we are to act once we attain the new heart through belief. And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where ye have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel, and they shall come thither, and they shall take away all the detestable things thereof and all the abominations thereof from thence. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and will give them an heart of flesh, that they may walk in my statutes and keep mine ordinances and do them. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God. But as for them whose heart walketh after the heart of their detestable things and their abominations, I will recompense their way upon their own heads, saith the Lord God, Yahuwah. It's clear what he asks of us, and while none of us are perfect, including myself, we should be striving for obedience. Yahuwah, our Father, makes it also very clear about what happens to the disobedient. And I will bring you out from the people, and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered, with a mighty hand, and with a stretched out arm, and with fury poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there will I plead with you face to face, like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant, and I will purge out from among you the rebels, and them that transgress against me. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I and the Lord. Who wants to be a part of the regathering only to have the door shut on them? Did Jesus, Yahusha, teach the same? Yes. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me ye that work iniquity. Iniquity is lawlessness. Don't let any vain words or teachings of men tell you otherwise. Here's that same scene better explained. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there not be enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Lamps, oil, and light. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Jesus, Yahusha, saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Brothers and sisters, I pray this message found you well and to know that if it is for our generation to see the destruction of Jerusalem and the land of Israel, to not be fearful, and to know that this is all according to the Most High's plan. 
And if we do see this happen, to know that our regathering comes right after. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices, and thunders, and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake, and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before Elohim to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Truly, throughout the centuries, she has been a mystery, and her identity, concealed, that is, until now. A day in which the books have been unsealed, many go to and fro, and knowledge has been increased. Come, let us reason together, and hear the word of Yahuwah concerning Mystery Babylon, revealed. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to the revealing of the identity of the great harlot, the woman, Mystery Babylon. There are many teachings on this topic, and you may already have some preconceived ideas as to her identity. Trust me, we've seen it all too. We only ask that you keep an open mind to the information presented here and test it for yourself as we will not be including any human wisdom or trying to make verses fit to a general understanding, but we will put together what the written word of Yahuwah says, our authority, which tells the whole story and was just waiting for these last hours for the puzzle pieces to be fit together. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names and blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. In our last video, we showed you through scripture and world history who the beast of Revelation is, 
whom she rides. If you have not seen it yet, we encourage you to view it now or after this video ends. A link should be flashing in the upper right corner of this video and will be in the description box below titled Unlocked, The Beast of Revelation. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the woman which you saw is that great city, which reigns over the kings of the earth. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city, that was clothed in fine linen and in purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Many have concluded that this must mean the Vatican as they are dressed in purple and scarlet and it could make sense if this verse is isolated and we will expound on this momentarily. However, in the previous video we showed unequivocally that the Vatican also known as the Holy Roman Empire is the beast of revelation not the great harlot who we are discussing today so if not the vatican then who according to the scriptures and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called sodom and egypt or also our adonai was crucified it's crystal clear and all agree that Yahusha HaMashiach, our Savior, was crucified in Jerusalem, whom Isaiah himself called Sodom. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Your country is desolate, your cities are burned with fire, your land, strangers devour it in your presence, and it is desolate, as overthrown by strangers. Except Yahuwah Sebaoth had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Hear the word of Yahuwah, you rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of Yahuwah, you people of Gomorrah. How is the faithful city become a harlot? It was full of judgment, righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. Yes, Jerusalem, the mother of harlots. The world is full of the daughters of this harlot, and nearly every major city acts as Babylon. But there's only one mother. Let's look at more evidence. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all tine wood and all manner of vessels of ivory, and all manner of vessels of most precious wood, and of brass, and iron, and marble, and cinnamon, and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and oil, and fine flour, and wheat, and beasts, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men, and saying, Alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen, and purple, and scarlet, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Brothers and sisters, this is the fullness of her inventory. What comes next may surprise you. This list matches the contents of the temple Solomon built. Let us scan First and Second Chronicles to see it for ourselves. 
Now I have prepared with all my might for the house of my Elohim, the gold for the things to be made of gold, and the silver for things of silver, and the brass for the things of brass, the iron for the things of iron, and wood for the things of wood, onyx stones, and stones to be set, glistening stones, and of diverse colors, and all manner of precious stones and marble stones in abundance. The son of a woman of the daughters of Dan and his father was a man of Tyre, skillful to work in gold, and in silver, in brass, in iron, in stone, and in timber, in purple, in blue, and in fine linen, and in crimson. Also, to grave any manner of graving, to find out every device which shall be put to him with thy cunning men, and with the cunning men of my lord David thy father. Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory, and overlaid it with pure gold. Also King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel that were assembled unto him before the ark sacrificed sheep and oxen, which could not be told nor numbered for multitude. And Solomon had horses brought out of Egypt, and linen yarn. The king's merchants received the linen yarn at a price. And they fetched up and brought forth out of Egypt a chariot for six hundred shekels of silver, and an horse for an hundred and fifty. And Baalath, and all the store cities that Solomon had, and all the chariot cities, and the cities of horsemen, and all that Solomon desired to build in Jerusalem, and in Lebanon, and throughout all the land of his dominion. And Solomon numbered all the strangers that were in the land of Israel, after numbering wherewith David his father had numbered them. And they were found in hundred and fifty thousand and three thousand and six hundred. And he set three score and ten thousand of them to be bearers of burdens, and four score thousand to be hewers in the mountains, and three thousand and six hundred overseers to set the people a work. And for the altar of incense refined gold by weight, and gold for the pattern of the chariot of the cherubims that spread out their wings and covered the ark of the covenant of Yahuwah. Some of them also were appointed to oversee the vessels and all the instruments of the sanctuary, and the fine flour, and the wine, and the oil, and the frankincense, and the spices. And Solomon gathered chariots and horsemen, and he had a thousand and four hundred chariots, and twelve thousand horsemen, which he placed in the chariots and with the king at Jerusalem. So what does this all mean? Will there be a third temple replicated to Solomon's temple built in Jerusalem? Probably so. And if it is, it will be an abomination in the eyes of Yahuwah. Why? Because we, not a building made by human hands, is where the Spirit of the Most High dwells. For more information on this, a link for the Third Temple according to Hebrews will be included. It's also interesting and worthy to note that there is one other mention of that great city in the book of Revelation in an opposite context. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Yahusha. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them ye shall scourge in your synagogues, and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zechariah, son of Barachias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and you would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Because you have forsaken me, I also will forsake you. When you beg mercy of me, I will show you no mercy. When you call upon me, I will not listen to you, for you have defiled your hands with blood, and your feet are swift to commit murder. 
It is not as though you had forsaken me. You have forsaken yourselves, says Yahuwah. Thus says Yahuwah Almighty, Have I not entreated you as a father entreats his sons, or a mother her daughters, or a nurse her children? That you should be my people, and I should be your Elohim, and that you should be my sons, and I should be your father? I gathered you as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, but now, what shall I do to you? I will cast you from my presence. I sent to you my servants the prophets, but you have taken and slain them and torn their bodies in pieces. Their blood I will require of you, says Yahuwah. Thus says Yahuwah Almighty, your house is desolate. Woe to the bloody city! It is full of lies and robbery. The prey departeth not. Because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot, the mistress of witchcrafts that selleth nations through her whoredoms and families through her witchcrafts, behold, I am against thee, saith Yahuwah Sebaoth, and I will discover thy skirts upon thy face, and I will show the nations thy nakedness and the kingdoms thy shame. She is empty and void and waste, and the heart melteth, and the knees smite together, and much pain is in all loins, and the faces of them all gather blackness where is the dwelling of the lions and the feeding place of the young lions where the lion even the old lion walked and the lions whelp and none made them afraid Ezekiel prophesied about Israel concerning the last days and told the story of the great harlot. For time's sake, we have selected out verses pertaining to our study here, but I encourage you to read it all when you have time. Some of the terms used here should be recognizable by now. And the word of Yahuwah came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face toward Jerusalem, and drop thy word toward the holy places, and prophesy against the land of Israel. And say to the land of Israel, Thus saith Yahuwah, Behold, I am against thee, and will draw forth my sword out of his sheath, and I will cut off from thee the righteous and the wicked. And it shall be unto them as a false divination in their sight, to them that have sworn oaths, but he will call to remembrance the iniquity that they may be taken. Therefore, thus saith Adonai Yahuwah, because ye have made your iniquity to be remembered, and that your transgressions are discovered, so that in all your doings your sins do appear. Because I say that ye are come to remembrance, ye shall be taken with a hand, and thou profane wicked prince of Israel, whose day is come, when iniquity shall have an end. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before Yahuwah to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Thou shalt be for fuel to the fire, thy blood shall be in the midst of the land, and thou shalt be no more remembered, for I, Yahuwah, have spoken it. Now, thou son of man, wilt thou judge, wilt thou judge the bloody city? Yea, thou shalt show her all her abominations. Then say you, Thus says Yahuwah Eloheinu, The city sheds blood in the midst of it, that her time may come, and maketh idols against herself to defile herself. You have become guilty in your blood that you have shed, and have defiled yourself in idols which you have made. And you have caused your days to draw near, and have come even unto your years. Therefore have I made you a reproach unto the heathen, and a mocking to all the countries. Those that be near, and those that be far from you, shall mock you, which are infamous and much vexed. You have despised mine holy things, and have profaned my sabbaths. Therefore thus saith Adonai Yahuwah, because ye are all become dross, behold, therefore I will gather you into the midst of Jerusalem, as they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin into the midst of the furnace to blow the fire upon it, to melt it, so will I gather you in mine anger and in my fury, and I will leave you there and melt you. Yea, I will gather you and blow upon you in the fire of my wrath, and ye shall be melted in the midst thereof. 
As silver is melted in the midst of the furnace, so shall you be melted in the midst thereof, and you shall know that I, Yahuwah, have poured out my fury upon you. The word of Yahuwah came again unto me, saying, Son of man, there were two women, the daughters of one mother. And they committed whoredoms in Egypt. They committed whoredoms in their youth. There were their breasts pressed, and there they bruised the teats of their virginity. And the names of them were Ahola, the elder, and Aholibah, her sister. And they were mine, and they bare sons and daughters. Thus were their names, Samaria as Ahola, and Jerusalem Aholibah. And Ahola played the harlot when she was mine, and she doted on her lovers, the Assyrians, her neighbors. Wherefore, I have delivered her into the hands of her lovers, into the hand of the Assyrians, upon whom she doted. And when her sister Aholibah saw this, she was more corrupt in her inordinate love than she, and in her whoredoms more than her sister in her whoredoms. Have you ever wondered why Mystery Babylon was given a cup filled to the double? I will do these things unto you, because you have gone a-whoring after the heathen, and because you are polluted with their idols. You have walked in the way of your sister, therefore I will give her cup into your hand. Thus says Adonai Yahuwah, You shall drink of your sister's cup, deep and large. You shall be laughed to scorn and had in derision, it contains much. You shall be filled with drunkenness and sorrow, with the cup of astonishment and desolation, with the cup of your sister Samaria. You shall even drink it and suck it out, and you shall break the shirts thereof, and pluck off your own breasts, for I have spoken it, says Adonai Yahuwah. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and Yahuwah hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her, even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works, and the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, saith your Elohim. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her, that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of Yahuwah's hand double for all her sins. We are living in the times where the children of the Pharisees and Sadducees have been regathered to the land. These people are not Yahuwah's people, as they rejected and still reject the fountain of living waters, our Messiah, Yahusha. The people whom our Savior called hypocrites, blind guides, fools, serpents, generations of vipers, whitewashed tombs, and more. Remember this, when Pilate wanted to let Yahusha go, for he found no sin in him, this is what the people said. His blood be on us and on our children. These same people are the ones who have been implementing and preparing the world to serve the Noahide laws, to which a believer in Messiah Yahusha can be executed for idolatry, because they believe that Messiah is an idol, not the Elohim which created all things. This is a small snippet of what they think of our Messiah, as it reads in the Talmud, in Gittin 57a. Onkelos then went and raised Jesus the Nazarene from the grave through necromancy. Onkelos said to him, Who is the most important in that world where you are now? Jesus said to him, The Jewish people. 
Onkelos asked him, Should I then attach myself to them in this world? Jesus said to them, Their welfare you shall seek, their misfortune you shall not seek. For anyone who touches them is regarded as if he were touching the apple of his eye. Onkelos said to him, What is the punishment of that man, a euphemism for Jesus himself, in the next world? Jesus said to him, He is punished with boiling excrement. As the master said, Anyone who mocks the words of the sages will be sentenced to boiling excrement. And this was his sin, as he mocked the words of the sages. The Jamara comments, Come and see the difference between the sinners of Israel and the prophets of the nations of the world. As Balaam, who was a prophet, wished Israel harm, whereas Jesus the Nazarene, who was a Jewish sinner, sought their well-being. So yes, brothers and sisters, they believe that Jesus, our Messiah, and by the way, other translations say Yeshu or Yeshua or Yahusha, they say that he is boiling in his own feces right now. That's what they think of your Savior. While they gladly take the financial support from Americans and others, they hate you and believe you don't deserve repentance, forgiveness. Yeah. So, Rabbi Sai, now we understand. The Jewish people are considered to be in all situations, even if we sin, we're considered to be children of Hashem. And if we're children, then the Father, this time being God, He can forgive us. So therefore, a Jew has repentance. One of the 613 commandments in the Torah is for a Jew to repent. Why isn't it a commandment for the Gentile? Because there is no repentance in the Gentile world. They have been performing unauthorized sacrifices, as we saw very recently on Mount Olives. Ezekiel 36 spells out completely the plan of the enemy, to which it says Edom, also known as Idiomia, would take it over for the purpose of destroying her. Thus says Yahuwah, because the enemy hath said against you, Aha! Even the ancient high places are ours in possession. Therefore prophesy and say, Thus says Yahuwah, because they have made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side, that ye might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen, and ye are taken up in the lips of talkers, and are the infamy of the people. Therefore, thus says Yahuwah, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idiomia, which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their hearts, with despiteful minds, to cast it out for a prey. Who are these Edomites today? Well, it's people like the quote-unquote royal family. Hadad died also, and the dukes of Edom were Duke Timna, Duke Aliyah, Duke Jetheth. Yes. If you ever wondered why the royal family used the titles Duke and Duchess, well, now you know. Nothing's changed. The Rothschilds and all of the other quote unquote elite families have created these new world order agencies, such as the League of Nations, which eventually became the United Nations, to which was sanctified and organized behind the scenes by the Vatican, the Beast of Revelation. This is why the whore is said to sit on the beast. These organizations were created to form the political state of Israel and to bring us to the point we are now. All these people and organizations are Kabbalistic Jews, whether knowingly or unknowingly serving Satan. As when the Jews were in captivity in physical Babylon, they took those practices back with them and have never ceased from doing so. This passage is from the book of Susanna, which was included in the 1611 King James and was removed in the late 1800s. In that year, two elders from the people were appointed as judges. Concerning them, Yahuwah had said, iniquity came forth from Babylon, from elders who were judges who were supposed to govern the people. These same people, brothers and sisters, is who became the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the same people who killed our Messiah. Behold. I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. 
They follow rabbinical traditions through their writings such as the Talmud, Midrash, Zohar, and more, that in their eyes supersede the Torah, which makes of no effect the true commandments of Yahuwah. He answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit, in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of Yahuwah, ye hold the tradition of men, the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things ye do. Remember, brothers and sisters, all of this is Yahuwah's plan, so we are not to fear. For Yahuwah hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and to give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of Yahuwah shall be fulfilled. While many are waiting for a third temple to be built, and the Antichrist to stand in it and claim to be God, consider the same passage in the Gospel of Luke, which is overlooked by many, and truly ties into everything we are saying today. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter thereinto. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. While the destruction of the temple happened in 70 AD, truly all things were not fulfilled then. Remember, Mystery Babylon is the abomination which will be made desolate. But not to worry, this is Abba's plan of vengeance. Therefore, thus saith Yahuwah Eloheinu, because ye are all become dross, behold, therefore I will gather you into the midst of Jerusalem, as they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin into the midst of the furnace to blow the fire upon it, to melt it. So will I gather you in mine anger and in my fury, and I will leave you there and melt you. Yea, I will gather you and blow upon you in the fire of my wrath, and ye shall be melted in the midst thereof. As silver is melted in the midst of the furnace, so shall ye be melted in the midst thereof. And ye shall know that I, Yahuwah, have poured out my fury upon you. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is Yahuwah Elohim who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament her when they shall see the smoke of her burning standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Again, brothers and sisters, not to worry. This is all part of his plan. And the desolate land shall be tilled, whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by. And they shall say, this land that was desolate is become like the Garden of Eden, and the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited. Then the heathen that are left round about you shall know that I, Yahuwah, build the ruined places and plant that was desolate. I, Yahuwah, have spoken it, and I will do it. That which has been is now, and that which is to be has already been and Yahuwah requires that which is past. The thing that has been is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. When looking at scriptures alone, the evidence is overwhelming that Jerusalem is Mystery Babylon. While the United States, London, the Muslim Caliphate, the Vatican, or dozens of other candidates are all reasonable to consider, they are all just pawns in this greater game. There is only one mother and her identity is now revealed. This brings major implications and busts wide open a large part of the great delusion in these last days. To understand what's to come next. Well, you've made it to the end of the video. I want to reiterate that this is not about hatred towards a group of people or stirring up hatred. In fact, it's actually the opposite. Messiah teaches us to have a love for all people and his atoning sacrifice is available to all. Doesn't matter if you're 
white or black or Asian, doesn't matter what your ethnicity is, his sacrifice is free to all. I want to remind you that Messiah's people are not a physical bloodline, but the true promised seed, which are those who believe and have faith in him and those that keep the commandments of the Most High. That's exactly who the devil goes after in these last days. So with that being said, this is about coming out of this doctrinal system, especially those of you out there that have faith in Messiah and are coming back to the Torah of the Most High. We don't need to go into Judaism. That's not what he's asked us to do. Brothers and sisters, much love to you and shalom. Blessings.